Hi, it's Roz, sitting enjoying um, some lovely late September sunshine here in Wales, where I'm on holiday. But the days are getting shorter, autumn is drawing in, the season is changing. Do we have to be downhearted? No, no we don't, because October is just come, just around the corner. And what is October? It's Victober, the month when we get to enjoy everything Victorian in, in terms of literature. Um, and before I go any further, I need to thank our hosts, Kate Howe and Katie Books and Things and Lucy the Reader for making Victober such a joy every year. Now, this year, I'm really throwing myself into Victober um, because I'm gonna have a, a, a month of, of total immersion, like only reading Victorian um, literature um, and I'll be able to tell you by the end of the month whether that was the joy that I think it's going to be or whether I get a bit fed up but who knows you know will I be like just itching for for I don't know some millennial novel um, by the end of it who knows I doubt it I doubt it yeah and our lovely Victoria hosts have set some challenges and because I'm throw myself into October full on I think one way or another I've got all the challenges covered but it, that's sort of with a little bit of twisting and turning um, so I will share the challenges with you um, as I go through talking about what I'm, my TBR is but um, to get them in detail go to um, one of the announcement videos and I will share um, share those below so all you have to do to take part in Victoria is to read a book that was first published in the British Isles somewhere in Victoria's reign, so between 1837 uh, and 1901. So that's pretty easy, isn't it? And, and if you're not already a Victoria kind of enthusiast, do, do think about doing that. Um, yeah, uh, I think Victorian literature is, 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 is so rich, so interesting, so satisfying. Um, I'm a real, you know, advocate for it I suppose and and every now and then you know we think oh do I really want to read a sort of great long heavy Victorian classic novel and uh, Victorian novels that are still read are still read for a reason it's because they are fun or um, dramatic or beautiful or you know and they're almost like the they they define the novel almost that the, the, the books of that era and for the most part, they're real page turners. Lots of them were originally published in serial form. So, you know, people had to want to read the next bit to buy the next edition with the next section. So, you know, don't expect them to be boring. But what they do often do is involve a little bit more patience at the beginning. You know, that people had more time for reading in the Victorian era. They didn't expect things to come to be short and fast and snappy they might almost have felt a bit cheated if they were you know they expected something to stretch out a bit more so just bear that in mind and and with that thought you're going to find it endlessly rewarding anyway what am i going to read well now the group challenge um from our host is to read a popular victorian novel that you've not read yet and they say you can either choose one that was popular then or one that's popular now so i'm currently reading with a group of people one popular Victorian novel that's Romola by George Eliot and I expect that I will finish that just at the start of October and that's one that's not really popular now but was enormously popular at the time because it was Eliot's foray into historical fiction but I'm going to read another George Eliot novel for Victoria, and um, that's Daniel Deronda, which I'm going to share reading with Hannah. I'm so looking forward to that, Hannah of Hannah's books. And uh, again, not not her best known novel anymore, but it was absolutely a, a bestseller at, at, at the time. It was, um, uh, you know, it came out in um, serialised form, as so often novels did then. Um, so. That's my that's my one for the group challenge, and it will be my last, last of George Eliot's sort of full-length novels that I'm going to read. So, more fun. 
Kate's challenge is to read a sensation novel. Now, here I'm cheating a little, OK, because your, your kind of classic sensation novel would be something like Lady Audley's Secret, you know, from the 1860s, um, you know, and I have read, or Wilkie Collins, yeah, you know, Woman in White or something. That's, that's your epitomises the idea of the, the sensation novel. But Kate says, it's OK, we can, we can um, read another Victorian novel, if we like, um, that has an element of sort of melodrama or, or whatever about it. And I'm going to read two, I think. One is Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell. Now, this was written in 1848, so before the, the, the golden age the, of the sensation novel in like the 1860s. Um, but it has an element of um, kind of the shocking, the melodrama, the surprise about the story. So um, uh, I think that kind of qualifies it and it's almost like a hint of what's to come I suppose what those sensation novels were drawing on in, in recent sort of literary habits as it were. The other one I'm going to read is Dracula by Bram Stoker 1897. Now that very definitely is sensational but um, but it's really actually kind of after the year of the sensation novel really and and it was key in the revival of the Gothic novel, which had, of course, been very popular. Um, we know you, you've read Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey, where, where you know the the heroine reads lots of Gothic novels, and you know, so that we, you know, end of end of the um, 18th century Gothic novels were big, and then back again, um, end of the 19th century with Dracula, and then you know, we've we've flourished ever since, I guess. Um, so, oh, and the reason I'm reading Dracula is because um, there was a tag, and I can't remember which it was, um, which asked you about books that you sort of pretended that you've read when you haven't. Well, I've, I've never meant to pretend that I'd read Dracula, but I just, I've heard so much about it, or seen film versions, so it's been so influential, that I thought I'd read it when I was a teenager. And then when I actually got a copy and looked at it, I thought, no, you know, I never actually did read this. So, this one... This is my chance to make good the, the lie that I've read, Dracula. Now, Mary Barton actually are predominantly chosen for Lucy's challenge because Lucy's challenge is to read a novel with a, uh, a female main character. Now, that's not hard in the Victorian era. So there was a, era, there was a lot of novels written with really good central female characters. Um, and... Uh, I picked Mary Barton because, you know, the character, the the, the female character is in the name. But say Daniel Deronda equally has a really key female character, you know, it's not it's not an unusual thing, I suppose. Katie's challenge is to read a Victorian novel set either in the countryside or in the an urban environment in the city, or in both. Or read both. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's a great excuse for me to get back to Trollope's um, Chronicles of Barsetshire, which I've read a couple of and I keep meaning to go back to and haven't. And so, you know, I'm going to use Victoria for that. And I'm going to read the third one, um, Dr Thorne, which was published in 1858. Now, uh, all the Barsetshire Chronicles are set kind of in or around uh, a fictional cathedral city called Barchester. And um, so, hence, in theory, fulfilling the city but actually, Dr Thorne is set a much more in the rural um, countryside of Barsetshire, in, in a village called um, Greshambury. Uh, they're, they're all fictional, they're all fictional. And so, to kind of get city properly, I'm going to have to go elsewhere. Now, Mary Barton's full title, yeah, is actually Mary Barton, A Tale of Manchester. Definitely a city, so... You know, that does tick that one off, but I don't want to use Mary Barton for three prompts. You know, that's that's lazy. So, I'm going to turn to Dickens. Now, Dickens is the archetypal novelist of the City of London, isn't he? And we really associate um, him with London. So, slightly perversely, the one that I've chosen to read is Hard Times, which is not, is one of the very few of his books that is not set in or at least in part in London um, it's set in a, a, a fictional northern industrial town or city um, that sounds a bit like Manchester again so you know I'm, I'm getting 
two Manchester novels. There we go, that was published in 1854. So that is five big fat chunky novels. Um, I can't show them to you here because I'm on holiday in Wales as I said. Now every month I like to also read a play and some poetry. Now the play to do Discussing Trouble with, with Tilly, we haven't picked yet but we're going to pick a Victorian play. We've done some Wild and Shore before so I'm not sure where we're going to go but we'll see. Suggestions was welcome as you know. For poetry, okay I've got a two-pronged, a two-pronged attack. One bit is that I'm going to start reading Robert Browning's verse novel, The Ring and the Book, which he wrote in, or came out in 1868-69. And that is a rather thrilling buddy read with Kate, um, Kate Howe, Victoria host, and Jennifer Brooks. Now, we're going to take it quite gradually. It's quite long. It's, it's you know, we're going to be reading it over months to come. So, so, um delighted to be doing that but it, it uh, I need uh, uh, some poetry that I'm going to finish in Victoria to count as my real Victoria poetry choice so I thought I have to go for the other half of the Browning poetry partnership and read Elizabeth Barrett Browning and I'm going to read I think um, her sonnets from the Portuguese which um, were published in 1850 and um, and the final, the bonus Victoria challenge is to um, read something out loud because the Victorians really enjoyed reading books aloud. It's another reason why um, their you know, novels are so readable because they were reading them aloud to each other. I mean, they were, some of them, like particularly Dickens, it was almost written to be performed. Uh, yeah. So I shall make sure that I do read um some of that some one or two of elizabeth barrett browning's sonnets um allowed for for poetry thursday so there we go now i can't choose a graphic novel so i'm going to skip that this month but i usually do one every month i also really like to read a piece of non-fiction every month and so i'm going to at least start even though a, 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 a Victorian, well, I could have picked some Victorian non-fiction because obviously there's lots of that, um, and uh, but I'm not. I'm really looking forward to reading The Artful Dickens by John Mullen. Um, I loved his book about um, Jane Austen's um, novels, um, What Matters in Jane Austen, and he's doing the same thing, I guess, for Dickens. So I hope to finish that, but for the most part, I'm going to read that in November as a non-fiction November choice. But um, so so that's my that's my little bit of, of, of non-fiction this month, is to start that. So I'm really looking forward to all of this. Tell me about your Victober plans, if you have them, or if you're going to like ruthlessly only read um, uh, 20th and 21st century works this month just to be perverse um like mark nash say yeah uh, and uh, have a lovely month <laughs>